I'm Jelen. This is Botanist, my very first board game design. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Please back up our project on Kickstarter if you think this would be a game for you. Hey everybody, this is Petra from uh, Aggie Games and this is our how to play video for Botanists. If you don't know Botanists yet, uh, go check it out on Board Game Geek and uh, subscribe so you get all the updates and news. If you like Botanists, then please um, uh, support our Kickstarter project. It's live now, we still have got plenty of days for this to, uh, to succeed. Um, please keep in mind that this video uses uh, paper mock-up uh, to show you how it works. Obviously the final version of the game will be nice thick cardboard boards and tiles plus uh, good quality cards for you to have plenty of fun with. So enjoy the video and uh, again if you want to support the project visit us on Kickstarter. Uh, included uh, the main board, uh, which is where you will have the market, and there's also the um, uh, score track. Uh, it also holds uh, slots for all the cards that you will be playing with uh, throughout the game. Uh, there's five different player boards, and we'll have a look at these in a minute in detail. Uh, you will have uh, 125 of these flower tiles, and they will populate your market, and it's what you um, want to purchase to um, to uh, plant the, the flowers in, in your land. Uh, you will have included also 76 uh, market cards, that's uh, these uh, that look like this from the front. Uh, you will have included also 86 uh, order cards, which are these cards here, and basically they ask you to fulfill these with uh, specific uh, types and numbers of flowers. You will also have included the uh, player pawns, one for each player, as, uh, as well as the player score tokens. Uh, and there will also be a bag included for you to put all the uh, 125 flower tiles in. Um, so now let's have a look at uh, some of the uh, components in detail and then I'll explain you how the game works. This is a player board and in the player board you will have three plots of land over here. And there's another patch which is called the marginal land over there. You also will have three crates. Uh, on these you will have cards like this, uh, which will be personal orders that you can fulfill over the course of the game. And once you fulfill them, you place them over here to denote that these two people are carrying it into uh, the van. And the important thing about these plots is that they will uh, give you information as to what flowers it is that you should plant on here, because that's the flowers that are really popular with your uh, usual customers. And if you manage to plant all the flowers uh, according to what uh, is on your player board, you will then be able to obtain bonus points. So this is the main board and here you will find the most important area which is the market. This is where you will be moving your player pawn to uh, collect f uh, flowers that you will then plant on your plots of land and hopefully also fulfill some of the orders over here that will uh, net you points uh, to win the game. Over here we got the market cards which look like this in the front and uh, they will tell you what flowers you will have to collect based on your location within the market. Uh, this is the order uh, draw deck and the open orders over here which we already mentioned and this is where you keep track of your victory. So let's have a look at how a player turn unfolds and how you play botanists. So the first step of the purchase flower action is to move in the market. When you move, your uh, player piece can move up to two spaces diagonally or orthogonally, or any combination thereof. Uh, on the first turn though, you're not in the market yet, so you can choose to move into the market from any of the outermost tiles. For example, I could go one, two to position myself onto this spot here. The next step in the purchase flower action consists in playing one of the market cards in your hand. Uh, it's the combination of where you are located within the market and the shape of the market cards that you have in your hand that will determine what flowers it is that you're going to collect. So for example, if I'm going to play this card here, I'm going to look at this icon because this is going to determine my location within this pattern, and then I'm going to collect that tile plus the other three around it. So in this case, I will have to collect this one here because that is where I'm located in within this pattern, plus one, two, three. So I collected these four flower tiles. So now that I have collected the flower tiles, I will have to assign them onto my plots of land. 
So I check the first available spot and what the requirement is. And if I do have a, a flower of the same color, then I will choose to play it there. Now, regardless of whether I do or not have a flower of the same color, I can always choose to play it face down. In so doing, I would trigger that space's special ability. But right now, I want to choose and play it face up. So this is a purple flower onto a purple spot. That's great. The remaining flowers will have to go to the marginal land over here. And with these ones, I can later try and fulfill orders in the open market. So now that you have assigned your flower tiles, normally you would use the bonus action if it triggered it. But we didn't do that now, so we skip on to the next phase, which is fulfilling orders. So you will look at your marginal land and check what flower tiles you have got there. If you can use them to fulfill any of the available orders at the moment. You can do that now. So in this case, we would be able to have a matching color here and a matching flower there, but we're still missing red, blue, and purple. None of the other two orders have got any yellows that we could use in combination with the one green. So for now, we won't be able to fulfill any orders. We keep these flowers here for the next turn. So after fulfilling an order, which we haven't done at this point, uh, you would refill the market over here. The card that you've played goes into the discard pile and then you redraw your hand back up to two cards. Uh, finally, before you pass the turn on to the next player, you also fill back up the market to uh, 25 flower tiles, keeping your player token where it was. So this concludes our turn. Now it's the other player's turn until it gets back to us and we'll fast forward to that so I can show you what happens then. So in the meantime, the other three players have had their turn as well. And as you can see, the market is now a lot busier with other player tokens um, on, on the flower tiles. And really you want to take advantage of their location as much as possible. So right now we're going to perform the purchase flower action one more time to illustrate how this can work. Uh, we are currently looking for a red flower. And this one here in particular is quite convenient to us. And the reason for that is because of a market card that I hold in my hand. I'm going to illustrate what that may look like. So first I'm going to move this before, one, two, and now I'm going to play my market card. That's going to be this one here. So what this means is, here's my location, and that's the other three. So as you can see, these two players fall within the pattern on my card. So that means that they're actually looking and contemplating those flowers, buying those flowers as well. So the vendor is not really willing to get rid of them because he might get a better profit with, with those two purchases. So in that case, I only have to take the one I'm standing on plus this one next to it. So in this way, I avoid taking up too many leftover flowers into my margin land as if I don't use them to fulfill orders quickly, I might end up with them with it. So we collected these two tiles. We need to assign them. I want to place the red one here, face up, so that I try and do a perfect run. The other one goes over here. So let's say I still had these ones from a previous turn. Uh, I now would want to look at the open orders and check if I can fulfill one. So there's this one here that requires one of each color, which I got one, two, three, four, five, one of each. I show them to everybody else. I return them to the bag. I collect the order which I place face down over here. This will net me five points at the scoring phase. So let's now look at the alternative action, which is tending your marginal land, which is this here. I've prepared a few flowers here. So let's say we've already played a few turns and you've accumulated quite a few. So now you really want to get try and get rid of them. So when you uh, tend your marginal land, you do not interact with the market. So that means your movement step is completely ignored. And instead you go into your marginal land and you pick one of these flower tiles that has to go face down onto your plot over here. So in this case, for example, I would pick the purple one. I'll show you why in a bit. I'll flip it down so it's with it now. Uh, because basically what this means is because you're tending this land, you're not taking care of the flowers over here, so they wither. Now, as mentioned before, whenever you place a, a flower tile face down here, you will trigger the bonus action. You don't have to take bonus actions, but you can if you want to. Now, I'll explain these all in a bit. 
So the next step is uh, to, after you play the bonus action, you may discard any or none or all of the order cards uh, in the on the main board, uh, and this allows you to refresh to see whether something more convenient comes out to you. Uh, what you also do is uh, your hand of two market cards, you add two more from the draw deck, and then you choose the two that you want to keep and uh, discard the rest. And finally, you get to uh, fulfill orders if you can. So let's say I have got this personal order over here, and these are the available order cards in the market. Uh, in this case, I could fulfill with two green, one red, and one blue my personal order card. So I flip it over over here. And I still have these ones left, so I could use the two red ones and the green one for this order card over here. I also flip it over and turn it over here. Uh, this concludes the uh, tending the marginal land action and player then would continue with the next player. So let's very briefly talk about bonus actions. As I mentioned before, whenever you collect tiles from the market, you can always choose to play them face down even if the colors were to match. If they don't match, you would have to forcibly play them face down. Or if you tend your marginal land, you will have to transfer one of those flowers onto the plot and you have to play them face down as well. So whenever this occurs that you place a flower tile face down, you may trigger the bonus action. Uh, so let's have a look at the different bonus actions. So in all there are five different bonus actions and they are all associated to the colors of the flowers. Uh, I've brought in another player board because as you can see the blue action is missing here and on the other hand purple is here. So let's check out these ones here. So let's check out these ones here. Purple action means that the player may swap a flower tile from the marginal land with uh, one flower tile of the choice in the market. This you can still do even if that the tile that you really want is occupied by another player. The next one here means that you may swap a flower tile from your marginal land with that of another player in their marginal land. And it is you who chooses both of the tiles that are going to be swapped. With this power over here, you may relocate your player piece on the market onto any other tile that you like. This is particularly useful because you may block a tile that you really, really want for the next turn, uh, or you could even block a tile that you know one of your opponents really would like to have. And we've already looked at these two, and there's also green. The green power enables you to uh, take a card from the uh, open orders and put it on your board as a personal order face up. So only you can fulfill that order. And finally, the blue color gives you straight up three points that you register on the score track. So let's have a look at scoring phase. Throughout the game there's three score phases that are triggered on the every fifth turn. So after all players have played the fifth turn, you do the first scoring, and then after the tenth turn, the second, and after the fifteenth turn, the third scoring phase. After the final scoring phase, you check for penalty points, and whoever's got the most points at that time wins the game. First thing you do is you check for order cards that you have fulfilled. So each order card is worth five points that you keep track of and the score track. It doesn't really matter how many flowers were required to fulfill these orders, they all are worth five points. After that, you check your plot of land. If you had a perfect run where all the flowers that you've planted match the requirement, you get an additional two point bonus in the first score phase, three in the second and an additional five in the last one. Finally, you check your marginal land over here. If you end up with no excess flowers in the marginal land, then you gain an additional 7 point bonus. However, if you have any flowers left, for example 1, or 2, or even 3, then you lose 2 points per excess flower. So that would be 2 for 6 points here. So your net gain in this case would be 15, plus 2, 17, minus 6, 11 points. So finally, let's look at the endgame scoring. Uh, the endgame, you're really just going to check for any penalties that you're still uh, going to take on 
personal orders that you have not fulfilled and also any flipped over tiles that you have accumulated throughout the game. So for any personal order that you did not fulfill, you will lose five points on your track. And uh, so you count up all of these, minus five, five points per each. Uh, on the plot of land, you will check how often did you use any abilities, or how many times were you unable to fulfill the requirement on your land. So the way this works, for example, in my case, is that I have got one, two, three, four, five. So you just take any five flower tiles from the bag and use the flip side as an eight. So I got five here. That's one for each one of mine. Three, four, five. That means I'll lose 15 points just for these tiles over here. So the more uh, bonus actions you use over the course of the game, the harder it will be for you to actually win the game. So you have to be quite careful with how you use the, um, the bonus actions. Uh, once every player has tallied the penalty points at the end, you check who's got the highest score, that player is the winner.